In this video I will show you how to make an advanced questing system in Unity. It will use the best practices of programming as you like, scriptable objects for creating quests and even a custom editor for convenience. Sounds good, right? Don't worry, this tutorial is still going to be easy for everyone. I want to say that I'm not the first one to make the system. Brackis did a simple tutorial on it and left a link to a more advanced one from another creator, but they both didn't use scriptable objects. This was a big problem to me when I was making a quest system for my simulation game Lost in Athelidus. Luckily, one of my subscribers suggested a project from Unity Learn, which had a similar system for weapons. Thank you a lot for this, by the way. So this video is going to be a combination of everything I learned to make the best quest system. The source code will be available on my Patreon page. And let's get to it! Quest system is a popular mechanic in RPGs, simulation games, open-world explorations, tycoons, etc. It can be practically used in any genre. But let's look at the basics of how the system works. I created a UML diagram, hopefully I got the notations right. Anyway, we have a quest class with information about it, like title, icon, description and of course the reward. It has an event. This will ensure that the quest manager knows when a quest is completed. I didn't include the quest manager here in the diagram, because it mostly handles the UI and you can do it your own way. The next instance we will be looking at is a quest goal. The goal is what we have to do in order to complete a quest. A quest can have more than one goal, that's why we have a list of them in the quest class. Also, the goal cannot exist without a quest, that's why we make it an inner class of quest. A goal also has some info like description, the amount of something that is needed to complete it. The thing is, goals can be of different types, like building goal, gathering goal, etc. To differentiate all these types, we make the base class abstract. An instance of it cannot be created, but the children of this class can be. As an example, I chose to make a building goal. We will take a look at it later when we write the code. Let's start by setting up the scene in Unity. It's mostly the UI here, but I will tell you how to connect everything to a real game. First, we have a panel for displaying all the quests that the player has. It's currently empty, but I will show you the prefab for it later. Then, we have a quest window with all that information from a quest object. It has a place for goals, which are also prefabs. As for this build button, this is just a way to simulate a real game. It will invoke an event of building to complete a goal. Now, let's look at the prefabs. Quest prefab is actually a button, which will be later used to bring up the full quest window. It has an image for the quest icon and a green indicator that the quest is completed, sort of like a check mark. Let's look at the goal prefab. You can also add an icon to it, but I didn't have enough space here. It has a skip button and a hidden check mark to indicate that the goal is done. That's all we have here. Now let's get to the coding. Create the quest script. It will inherit from a scriptable object. Open it in the editor and add a structure for the information about the quest. We will have a name, icon and description. Create a field for this information. Next, create another structure for the reward we get when we finish a quest. Add a field for it. We can also assign the default values here. I made all the fields here public since it is a scriptable object and we'd have to fill in them in the inspector. Now let's create a quest goal. It is an abstract class inside the quest class. It will have a description string, a current amount of what is needed to complete a goal. Notice that it has a protected set because we don't want anyone outside this class to set this value. And a required amount. The reason we create these fields is because no matter what type of goal it is, it always has a number of things we have to do. If it is a building goal, we set the amount to 1. If it is a gathering goal, maybe we set it to 3. We also create a virtual void to get the description. After the declaration of this class, create a list of goals. Now let's add some behavior to our objects. We'll start by creating an event for quest completion. After the declaration of the quest class, write a simple line of code. Public class quest completed event, which inherits from Unity event with a parameter quest. Go back to the quest class and create a public field for this event. Also, create a build completed. Go to the goal class and create a build completed and an event. This time it is going to be a simple Unity event. Hide this field in the inspector. We don't really need to show it, but it has to be public. 
As for the methods here, we will need one for initialization. Here we will set the bool to false and create an event. You might wonder, why initialize the bool here, when we all know that its default value equals false? So, the thing is, when we change it at runtime, it also changes in the scriptable object too. Normally, this doesn't happen, but because of the custom editor, it will. Keeping that in mind, we have to think of the times when we restart the game. It would be very inconvenient to go through all the quests and change this bool. It could have been a nice way of saving things, but it will just cause more problems later. We need a way to know when a goal is finished, so let's create a method to evaluate it. In it, we will check if the current amount is bigger or equal to the required amount. If this is true, we need to mark this goal completed. Let's create a method for this. In it, set the bool completed to true, invoke the event and also remove all listeners. We don't want them to be called over and over again. Another method I want to create is skip. I'll just print out that the goal is completed and call the complete method. This is the place to charge the player some currency. This is something you will have to write yourself since I don't know the structure of your game. Let's go back to the quest class and write some methods there too. First one, initialize. We do the same things as we did for our goal, set the bool and create an event. But also we have to go through each goal and initialize it. We have to subscribe quest to the goal completed event. But what do we do when a goal is completed? Write a method to check all the goals. First, check if every goal in this quest is completed. If so, give the player the reward. We get it from the struct we created in the quest class. Then, we invoke a quest finished event and remove all the listeners. Now it's time to make different goals. I will only show one as an example, a building goal. It will of course inherit from a quest goal. It will have a string for a building. This way we can check if we have built the right one. You can of course create a field of any type you want to check the goal. We will override the method getDescription and actually fill it in here. We have to make this goal listen to the building event. At this point I added an event manager to my scripts and created an event for building. I left a link to the manager I used in the description. We create a method on building which accepts the event info. We check here if the buildings are the same, increment the amount and evaluate the goal. Override the initialize method. Don't forget to call the base class and then subscribe to this goal to the building event using our event manager. And finally, let's get to the custom editor part. This part might be confusing sometimes, honestly I'm still new to it so forgive me if I say something wrong. First of all, create a custom editor class. We want it to work only if we're in the Unity editor. Write an if for this. Otherwise, on the stage of building, it is going to throw an exception. Then, write two serialized property fields for request info and reward. Then, create a list of strings to store the names of different goals. We will get them later. And right after this, create another field for the goal list itself. Next, create a method to show a menu item for a quest. It's going to be like any other scriptable object. Now, to the methods. Create a method on enable. It will fire right after we create an instance of a quest. We will get all the properties and initialize the fields we created earlier. To do this, call the method find property on the serialized object and pass a parameter to it. Write name of and in the parentheses write the name of a field you want to get, like quest.information. Do this for all your fields. Now we have to get the names of all our goals. Save the type of a quest goal, then get all the subclasses using this complex query. Basically, what this does is loads all the classes that inherit from our quest goal class. Does a few checks like whether this class is not abstract, then gets their names and saves them into a list. This list is going to be displayed in a drop-down menu, so we can add different goals to a quest. Another method that we would need is on Inspector GUI. It will be called when we click on a quest object and it is going to be displayed in the inspector. This is where all the magic happens. I decided not to write it simultaneously as I speak and just display it all at once because it might be confusing for someone who has never worked with a custom editor before. And also, just to be clear, this is not a tutorial on how to use custom editors, so if you have any troubles understanding what is going on in this code, Unity Manual has an answer for you. This code is taken from a Unity Learn project. I modified it a little bit to match my scripts. 
In general, this will ensure that we are displaying all the fields of a quest object and also its list with goals. There will be a button to add a new quest goal of any type to the list and also a button to remove it. The trick is that no matter what type of goal you add, the fields of it will be displayed properly. So if you have a house instance in a building goal and an item instance in a gathering goal, they're going to be displayed under their goals. When I was making my game Leah, I ran into a problem that I couldn't store different types of goals and fill them in right in the inspector. By the way, if you haven't seen my devlog series, go check it out. I show a lot of interesting and useful things there. And now, a brief explanation of this code. I decided to add it since it might be really confusing for newer developers, and I really want you to be able to make this system because it is amazing. First part of the code is responsible for displaying the information about a quest. Since it is a struct, we have to go through each element and show it. Next, we have this part where we display the reward info. It is basically the same code that we used for the information. Next, we have a line of code which makes a drop-down menu with all the types of goals that we have. If the choice is not empty, we create a new instance of a chosen type, add it to assets and add it to our array of goals. After this, we display the whole list of goals which we can edit right here and also remove from the list. It's going to display all the fields from a goal. Also, it will create a button besides each goal. This button will pass an index of an element you want to remove. After the loop, we will check if the button was pressed and if yes, we will delete the element. Finally, we save everything by calling the method apply modified properties. Now we can finally add our first quest in the editor. Now let's make the UI work. This part can be different for you, but I will show you the base and give you an idea on how to do it. First, create two new scripts, quest manager and quest window. Quest manager will be keeping track of all our current quests handling the quest panel and its initialization. Quest window is the window that pops up when we want to view a quest. We could of course control it right from the manager, but it's better to separate the code. Add the quest manager to the panel with quests and the quest window to the quest window object. Open the manager script, create some fields for the UI and a list of current quests. In the awake method, go through each quest and initialize it. After this, instantiate a quest prefab and add it to other quests. Set an icon on it and add a listener to the button component. For now, it's just going to bring up the window. Create a method to connect to a building button and connect it. This will invoke an event and pass the information. Remember, our building goal is going to be listening to this. Create a method on quest completed, which accepts a quest as a parameter. It will set active the quest checkmark on a completed quest. Go back to our loop and add this method as a listener to each quest. Go to the editor and set all the fields. We can already test it. As you can see, the window does not initialize with quest information. Now, open the window script. Create the fields for text, icons and other UI elements. Create a method to initialize the window. Here we will set the title and description. Then, in a for each loop, go through each goal and instantiate a goal prefab. Set the description count and add a listener to the button. Here we will also check if any goals in this quest are completed and replace the skip button with a check mark. Call this method in the wake in the quest manager. Add another small method close window, where we will disable the window and also delete the goals since we instantiate them next time again. Finally, the system is done, let's test it. Go to the editor and add a quest to the list in the quest manager. We drop this script on the quest panel. Hit play and there you have it, a working quest system in the game. We can see our quests on this panel. If we click on one of them, it will bring up the window with all the info. Close this window, press the build button and if we go back to the quest we can see the check mark appearing. We can also skip a goal. Everything works just fine, so let's talk about how to make this system better and implement it in a real game. The first thing to think about is how the player would get these quests. If your game has quests that are followed by each other, your option is to make a field in a quest for the next one or a list for multiple. When a quest is completed, you will just add the next one to your list in the quest manager. 
Also, I'd like to mention that you would want to remove a completed quest from the list. Another way to get a quest is to talk to a side character or visit a location. In this case, you would need to assign a quest to an NPC and add it to the list after the player has finished the conversation. Another thing that you can do is to make the reward of different types. For example, some quests will grant you coins, others will grant you a special building or a character. To do this, make the reward similar to a quest goal. Don't forget to expose it in the editor like we did with the quest goals. And this is it for this video. Thank you for watching. I want to thank everyone who supported me on Patreon and welcome Gage and Yusima Farouk. Don't forget to like this video if you found it useful. Subscribe to my channel to see more game dev content from me. Bye!